Hi, welcome to the Gapster channel. These are quick tutorials on how to do things in DIY, trying to get everybody to feel comfortable, especially if you're new with soldering things, doing things and stuff like that. It's a whole series, but let's start with today's topic, how to solder small components. In this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to solder small components. We're gonna solder an OPA 861, which measures about three millimeters wide by five. It's got five legs and a small UFL connector, which is about two millimeter by two millimeter. This is really small. And it's got some really tricky, actually, legs to solder. So let's see how we can do that. Let's start with the OP861. If you don't have tweezers like these, they're extremely cheap. There is no excuse for not having something like that. I'll put a link of those in the description below. So the OP861, as an example, for example, we're going to first start by orienting it to the proper orientation. You can see there's a dot here, there's a dot here, that's pin one, so make sure it's all lined up. We're going to use some flux, and flux is going to be a good one for this kind of small component. You don't have to use it for all your components, but when it comes to tricky ones, it will make your life a lot easier. So we put the flux in, and the best way to do this is to use a soldering iron that is very small. So as you see, the tip of the soldering iron is about half the size of the pad, and that's a good way to start. If you have a big tip, please switch your tip or switch your iron. I usually have a cheap iron with a small tip just for that kind of work, and this way I can keep my other iron. I don't have to keep changing the tip on it. So what you want to do first is start by uh, putting solder on the first, on one of the pads and uh, just put your solder iron on it, just heat it up a little bit and just add a little bit of solder to it. And you're going to have a little bit of solder just on that one pad. And that's it. So just, that's all you're going to do to start. Now it becomes so easy. Now all you have to do is take your component put it where you want it to go, make sure it's, le it's leveled properly and it's in the right orientation. Apply a little bit of pressure on it as you heat that same pad and it's just going to sink right down. What happens here is you secured your, by securing one leg, now it's easy to solder the rest, you don't have to worry about it moving on you. Now let's say it's like this example, it's not exactly where you want it to be, so you can again hold it on each side just like that, and we're going to heat it up one more time, and we're just going to position it exactly just to have it in the proper direction. And now we have it exactly where it wants to be. Make sure double check the pin one is still lined up with pin one, and we are good to go for the rest. Becomes really easy now. All you have to do is just heat each pad, tiny bit of iron. So that's one way. The so other way is you can put a little bit of solder on your iron and then bring it to the pad. And that's sometimes I find that even easier. Again, put a little bit of solder and just bring it over. As you can see, we just solder four legs in no time. We're going to flip this thing around and we are going to solder the other pads the same way. I'm not going to bore you with that. So let's move on to something even smaller, which is going to be our little tiny pesky little UFL connector. So with this tiny little UFL connector, the hardest part is to figure out which one is positive. There's three that are negative and one is positive. So those two are easy to find, but this one or this one, it's hard to tell which one. Now there's a couple little uh, angles on the corners here that you can see and that tells you that this is positive. If you cannot see them with your own naked eye, that's kind of hard to see sometimes, I highly suggest one of those little magnifiers because once you put that thing on, it's going to come very clear for you which one is which. This is like a $10 thing. It's easy. It's one of those things that are very indispensable. I use it all the time. I'll put a link of this one as well below. So let's take our EFL connector. So now that we figured out that this is a positive, we're going to leave it in that orientation so we don't forget about it. And we're going to do the same idea as we did with the OPI 61. We're going to put a tiny bit of flux. It will, like I said, make your life easier. And again, you don't need tons of this stuff, just a tiny bit. And the second thing you're going to do is same idea as we did before, is put some solder on one of the pads. 
and I, you don't have to put too much just a little bit just enough to wet it and that's going to make your life now easier now all you have to do is grab your AFL connector again with those awesome little tweezers you are going to put it where it needs to be you're going to put it exactly where it needs to be once you're happy with this orientation you're going to heat up that solder joint that you put in just apply a little bit of pressure on it and you are just going to have it now it's soldered the secret is not to put too much solder otherwise it's very easy for the solder to jump from the pad onto the actual circle on top and now it's completely messed up if that does happen to you uh, the whole thing is gone but it's not a big deal but to take it out just heat both all three pads very quickly and then just flick it off it will come flying so now that we've put in the one side it becomes easy now to solder the other side now i've noticed that i actually put it a little bit slightly off and that's no big deal before you start soldering the rest you can grab onto it again heat the pad a little bit more and we're just going to move it just a little bit to where it needs to be so figure that's a good spot for it and that looks a little bit better uh, those pads are slightly bigger. I made it some bigger just so you can easily solder those yeah, UFL connectors. Now that's there, it's pretty simple. You heat the pad. Heating the pad first helps a lot. And then you add a bit of solder and it should just flow. Keep it low. Don't try to go too high up so you don't connect to the actual UFL and put solder on it. And the last thing you want to do is now put some solder on the third one again same idea heat the pad a little bit add a bit of solder and kaboom you've got a nice beautiful now you have a nice beautiful finish and you can be proud of it so as you can see it's fairly simple to solder small components when they have multiple legs start by securing one leg and by putting a bit of solder first putting the component in and that's going to make your life easier then you don't have to keep fussing around with it moving on you and all that kind of stuff because once you have more than one solder uh, leg on it then it's going to be impossible to move. UFL uh, connectors are notorious for sometimes you think they're in, in connected properly and then you soon realize that they're not. It happened to me many many times. It's always important to put your tester on continuity. You can hear the beep and then you want to basically put your test point on the actual UFL, like on the top part, on the negative part, and check the negative, and it's connected. Now check the positive, they are not connected together, and that's a good sign. Now you're going to put it right in the middle, that's a little tricky, but you can do it. So we're going to put one here and one here, and now we know that we actually soldered this in the right position. Once you're done soldering your little components, it's very important to use a magnifier and actually check to see if you soldered everything correctly. In this example, I thought I did such an amazing job and I soon realized that I actually missed an entire row here. I only soldered one side. As you can see, none of these pads are soldered. If I did not check with a little magnifier or even look closely, I would not have found it. So it's important to have a look and always check your work. Once I figured out my mistake, I went back and soldered that row and now I can be happy with my job. In the corner here, I'm gonna put some different songs that are very well recorded that you can listen to on, on your system. In the corner up here, I'm gonna put a link on how to improve the power in your house so you get the best power to your system. A speaker will be in the middle if you'd like to subscribe. You can also join my Patreon and help me out as well. I hope to see you again. Take care.